It's time for City Beat, your source for all the latest news on the city of Thompson. Only on 1029 CHTF, your radio station. Good morning and welcome to this first City Beat of 2018. My name is Stuart Walter and today I'm joined by Deputy Mayor Colleen Smook. Good morning. Good morning. Let's start off by talking about the biggest thing in the news over the past little while. I know I spent a lot of my time trying to update people via our station's Facebook page to do with the fire at the interior end. Could you give us the latest update on the situation? Yes, and I just talked to the fire chief about 15 minutes ago, so pardon me if I'm using notes. Uh, basically, the city of Thompson has pulled all their equipment off the site. Uh, the city of Thompson fire and get investigation team is still part of it. If you do see smoke and there are some hot spots, they will be bringing water over and taking them out. Uh, the site has officially been released to the offices of the fire commissioner and an in independent investigator, origin and cause, and the RCMP are also on site. Uh, they also have smooks uh, there with a backhoe that are dismantling the building as per the Office of the Fire Commissioner the way it needs to be, like they call it surgically dismantling, so that they can check anything out. So kind of like when someone dies, they have their autopsy. It's, it's similar yes. to that. Yes. And then is there any update on the road closures? I know there are a lot of people who were had to find alternate routes when all the water went down Riverside. Yes, and not all the water has finished going down Riverside. There will be runoff, there will be problems. The road is still going to remain closed at Nickel and Riverside. Uh, you can get onto Riverside through Silver come around that access but and please don't go around the barricades that includes uh, you know any city councillors any of the general public uh, those are there for a reason and for a safety reason if a person sees one go through a barricade they follow um, then it ends up in trouble so they are on an ongoing basis uh, they've got the catch basins uh, cleaned out and they will be cleaning up the ice as it comes. There likely are still a driveway or two that they're working on and they will be working on it for the next while. That leads us then into our next one, snow removal. It's I understand the city's in the process of removing the snow banks now that everything's mostly in, under control in terms of getting the plowing of the streets done. Could you give us the latest update on that? Okay, we're not big time into the snow removal right now due to the fact with the fire, and we did have a couple issues with uh, our equipment last week with the minus 40 temperatures and the hydraulics. So, and we've had a big water break on Barron's Road, so they had to mitigate that. Uh, they're working on uh, Hemlock. Uh, there was a couple bad water breaks there. It was also a sea of ice. I went down there yesterday and it was quite a mess. So they are working on, the, on those areas to start with. We will be working on getting the snow banks uh, removed from the corners to start with. Our sanding trucks are out. Um, it was brought to my attention today that a couple of the streets uh, seem to be over sanded. I think it is done in the purpose of safety. Some of those streets did have water breaks on them. So the trucks have got that uh, taken care of and they just want to make sure that it's, it's safe. Uh, further to the snow removal, uh, not actually snow removal though, uh, or from the public works, uh, your trees, your Christmas trees. Uh, if you put them on your front lawn uh, where your garbage can sit, on garbage day there will be trucks going around and picking them up and there'll be no charge for that. That is very good information to have, especially this time of year. Yes. Moving on to talk about City Council, it was, it was a very long meeting to say the least. And there was one long debate that lasted about 40 minutes and that was to do with the new grant and with Valet. Could you start by talking about the the letter of understanding, the, the numbers that were discussed. I know not everyone is, probably has a chance to know what they are yet. Yes. Basically, this was ongoing. Uh, the grant in lieu, basically, we started meeting last May in earnest on, on it. Uh, there was a grant in lieu committee uh, consisted of uh, Councillor Valentino as the head, uh, 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 Councillor Beyer and myself were on the committee. And then we had the school district of Mystery Lake. We had uh, Angel Bartlett and uh, Don McDonald and uh, Kelly um, Knott. And then from um, Valet, we had uh, Mark Scott, uh, Darren Dodd, and Regula Kurt were part of the, the team. Uh, basically, it's called a negotiation, but really it's not. It's each side telling 
what they need and we can't always get together. And Valet now, uh, the big Brazilian company Valet, has given a mandate to all their other subsidiaries that you're going to run under your own power. So Thompson is responsible for its area, whether it be mining and development or that. So basically, uh, nickel prices being what they are, uh, of course, it affects Thompson. The last uh, agreement, GIL, it gave $6 million a year to the city of Thompson. We knew that was going to cut back. We've actually, for this coming year, 2018, we'll get $4.8 million. And for the next three years after that, we'll be $3 million each. So that, those there will have to be is where we really tighten our belt. We're talking to the province about accessing the, there's a mining fund to get money out of. We've sent out a list that of things that we got as councillors and we'll be going forth to staff and that at the city to see where we can cut some costs uh, to, to you know, mitigate this without a lot of impact on the city and our staff. As I mentioned, it was a long debate Tuesday night. I believe it was 40 minutes is what, well, when I looked at my watch, it was about 8.20 when we were, the council had been finished talking about that. Could you give your thoughts on the new grant new and all the talk that happened on Tuesday night? Yeah, th my thoughts on the grant in lieu is Theoretically, if Valet only has to pay us according to the number of employees they have. So with the closing of Birch Tree and with the getting rid of the smelter, they could end up only having to give us about a million dollars. So for us to be guaranteed the 4.833 3 and 3, we're actually in some ways very lucky. Now, lucky in the sense that if they wanted to stick to the letter, they could do that. Um, and at least with the 4.8 this year, we we can uh, gives us another year to to ad adapt. Um, some councillors felt that we should hold out for more money and that we shouldn't sign the agreement. That is not the fact of what was going to happen. Uh, we were going to get what we were going to get. We were just able to plead our case and able to get what we have. If we would have just stood back and said nothing, it's very possible we would have only got, you know, a little over a million dollars. One of the other topics discussed was the Thompson Hotel Association. Could you explain what the resolution was that was before council and why it's important for the city? Okay. This goes back to uh, when the 5% accommodation tax first came into being, and I believe that was 2008, right in that area. Um, at that time, even, it was talked about by the hotel industry and that, that they figured they should get some money back to promote Thompson or set up a economic development that should go. So that hadn't really happened. So in the, over the last couple of years at council, we've talked about it. And then we agreed to set up a hotel association and they would get back some money so that they can increase their bed nights, which would increase the economy of Thompson. So we started meeting er, er, in earnest at the beginning of this year, and we came to an agreement. So for 2017, they had to form an association, and uh, once that association was formed, they would get $200,000 to start the process. Uh, that process included that the city wants them to have the hotel office, the association office in Thompson and to, you know, to, to have a staff. So we had sort of assumed that this would process would be going by June, July, and it didn't happen. So again, there was a couple councillors that weren't really uh, thinking that the hotel association should get their full 200,000 for two, uh, 2017, but we had agreed as long as it was open in 2017, it would happen. And the amalgamation, their amalgamation took place October 23rd. So we've agreed to give them the 2017 $200,000. Uh, once the agreement was signed from the other night, they'll get 100,000 and then the second half of the 2017, the 100,000, they'll get when their office is set up and hopefully before April 30th. And at that time, they're for their 2018 agreement, they'll get $100,000 and then their other 100,000 will come in July 
uh, for two, and then there's also an incentive. We take in about a half a million dollars, 500, $550,000. Anything over the half million dollars, they'll get a percentage of that from like, of 2017, so they'll get a percentage in 2018. So it, I think it's a win-win for the situation, for, in, for the city, for the hotels. I think that was it's something very good for the city. It's what I believe Councillor Byer was getting at in the grant and new discussion at the end. She was talking about how the city needs to grow the economic base, especially, and to stop being so reliant on big corporations like Valet. And so this is something that's hopefully going to expand the economic base of the city. Exactly. The other thing that sparked my interest is Winter Games is now officially a special event here in the city. Why is it important for Council to make this a special event? And what makes help set that aside from other things well the winter games is a big thing and when you give special event status to that it just makes it easier with other uh permits uh, in, and uh things that they they can uh, they can get approved for in that speaking of regular events there are a few going on i understand you want to talk about uh, Winterfest is coming up, February 2nd to the 4th, and if you want to help or find out what's going on, please get a hold of Darlene at the rec centre, 677-7969. Another thing I'd like, it's not an event as such, but it's uh, necessary, is a pool closure. The, act, the pool is going to be closed from January 8th to the 21st. It's basically finishing off some of the work that has been ongoing in the summer and with the heaters and some valves and that. And they're going to install some of the other things that they need to get ready for the Winter Games. And the reason it was chosen now to close, because it wasn't planned originally, was so that in case something happens or we need something, it still gives them a six-week window before the winter games to get things done especially like you said with the winter games come up we want to make sure everything's in tip-top shape yes. and that leads us into our next topic talking about the winter games well the winter games are coming so basically uh what they need you to do is sign up to volunteer uh manitoba winter ca and follow the links to the volunteer they're also going to set up a storefront in the city centre mall starting this Saturday. There you can get gear. They'll, you can sign up as a volunteer there if you're not sure how to do it. Uh, you can win prizes, buy the prize packs, including uh, there's a Jets, Jets pack. I think Paul will be interested in that, so maybe there. Uh, Fan Gear Friday. If everybody's encouraged to wear their... Uh, Winter Games on Fridays. Hashtag is play, hashtag play North. Uh, official hashtag of the games, and it'll help sprout, spread the word. Uh, social media, just everybody go out and be involved. And just the, the storefront is opening on the 13th, 13th, not this Saturday. It's next Saturday. Oh, next Saturday. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm, I'm in a rush. I'm sorry. <laughs> I won't be here next Saturday. And then it's the end of one of the busiest seasons of the years for a lot of people in town. Christmas rush, especially with the Salvation Army, it's the busiest time of year. And it's very good news coming out of that camp. There is very good news. Uh, when I, w I was actually talking to Cheryl Harnham just right after because I had heard some doom and gloom considering concerning the kettles and that. And they actually ended up with the final number was over $40,000, which will definitely get them through this year. Now, you know, with the cold weather in Thompson, things can happen. Thompson is a great place. If something like that would happen, they'll just have to put out the call and us citizens will come up and help them out. And then, of course, donations are always accepted throughout the year. The best way to yes. do that is to contact Roy Bladen at 204-307-2193. Sounds, sounds good. And then the other really awesome thing is Operation Red Nose. Totals are way up this year. Yes. They raised over $9,300 this year. I must admit, this is the second year I haven't drove for it. So it's, it's awesome to see they did so well. And the $9,300 stays in town for local youth organizations. And they had the third highest total in the province behind Winnipeg and Portage. So last year, I think the PAW beat us out, so there was a little bit more incentive this year to get out and drive. And from what I understand, even New Year's was looking like it was going to be a little bit short for volunteers, and people come out of the woodwork to make it a great evening. Well, you spoke about the PAW. I believe we beat them by about $3,000 raised this year, and that last night on New Year's Eve was definitely a help with a, around $1,000 
donated. Right so it's not so much that the service has to be used, but it's more talking about the fact that the community gives the money and is willing to help out these local organizations when they really don't have to. Yes, no, our community is good even with the, you know, you, we talk economic doom and gloom, uh, really Thompson and our outlying areas, you know, we're still 50 to 60,000 people up here, so Thompson isn't going anywhere and the businesses are renovating and a couple new businesses are looking, coming into town. It's going to be an exciting year in 2018 already just by the building permits. Well, thank you so much for joining me this morning, Deputy Mayor Smook. Well, thank you. If you have a question you'd like answered next week, email it in advance to chtmnews at arcticradio.ca. For CityBeat here on 1029 CHTM, I'm Stuart Walter. City